Well, I think the value is, is Cody's been hearing a consistent message now for four years. Cody, uh, the Drew Schaefer's of the world, you know, the Justin Glenn's, the Tony Goldberg's, the Adam Long's. Those guys who, from the, they were in that first team meeting when I arrived, and they've been hearing that same message. And so um, they can be a bit of a calming influence on the young guys in that um, they can anticipate what might be coming. Um, what might be to expect um, and, and maybe minimize some of the anxiety that some young guys might have as, as we move through training camp and into the season and through the off season, things of that nature. So it's, it's always great when you can have the, the real veteran leaders on your team um, that can that can echo the message and they understand the message because they've heard it so many times. When you talked to him last year about making the decision you made, what, what kind of things were you explaining well, it was it was about him. It wasn't about us. And you know, anytime you have that type of loss, uh, personally, you know, that's hard. And, and yeah, I wanted just to ensure for Cody that his senior season was one that that minimized the distractions and one that he could enjoy uh, and have a have a great experience. Um, and I felt like that was just the right thing to do for Cody, and, and he agreed. But on top of that. We benefited from it as a football program that we get a senior leader and a receiving core that's relatively young. Um, to have his leadership to go along with James Johnson is big for us. And so I, I just thought it was a win-win for, for both of us. Does it matter to you that maybe some of the guys who have heard the message for four years aren't necessarily like starters or? No, I don't, I don't think it's about that. You know, we're, on this, we're in this thing together. We're a football team. Um, we, we all have the common goal of winning a championship. And, you know, these guys, each and every one of them want to do what's best for the team. And everybody's got a role. Some roles are different than others, but everybody's got a role. And how we can execute our job and our, within our role is, is what's important. All right. When you're out here playing, you know, offensive line combination, linebacker taking and matching, is there a date you'd like to set about it? Well, I hope I feel good when <laughs> play San Diego State. That, that's the most important thing. You know, I hope that when, when we take the field Saturday night at 7.30, I feel great about the 11 on offense, the 11 on defense, the 11 on the punt team, the, the kickoff team, all that. You know, and so as always, training camp is a work in progress. And you're looking for, for, for progress, incremental progress from day one to the time it's, it's time to kick off in the opener. And it comes in, in a lot of different forms, that, that progress. And sometimes it's from an individual, sometimes it's from a unit. Sometimes it's from one, you know, one facet of the game. Sometimes it's it's in the run game or the pass defense. And so you're, you're constantly looking for those things to make yourself feel better about it. I feel good about our team in general. There are still areas that I want us to get better at, and we got some information today. I think of areas that we need to work on. Um, you know, this was the first time we let them go out on the field and and have to play yep. without a coach in the ear telling them what to do, without being able to look at a script to see what might be coming. They had to go play and get a call and go line up and communicate and execute. And I think there were some guys that we thought were maybe a little further along that struggled at that a bit today. So we need to, we need to put them and keep pushing them in those in those types of settings so that they can feel more comfortable doing it. What Steve, are, that being said, what was your kind of initial take on the mechanics and the tempo of, of this scrimmage? That was pretty good. Um, our tempo needs to increase immensely offensively. Uh, we're in the huddle way too long. Um, again, I thought guys were a little bit excited, maybe a bit anxious today, and made a few mistakes that they normally hadn't been making so far in training camp, getting lined up running the right routes, making the right calls. I thought in the back end, you know, the same kind of thing. Some young guys you know, making some calls and, and, or not communicating, so a lack of communication there. But those are, those are fixable things. You know, I, I didn't see something glaring where, geez, we're playing the wrong guy at the wrong spot and things of that nature. It's about being confident. It's about doing what you've been prepared to do throughout campus. So we got to go look at this thing and, and then – point out those errors, those mistakes that are they're definitely correctable um, and get them corrected quickly so we can keep moving forward. What are some of those positions that you want to see improved that you, that you mentioned a little bit earlier? Uh, I would say all 22. We, we need to improve. You know, Everybody needs to improve. Keith needs to improve. He, he, I've seen him better than he, than he was today. So 
everybody has to improve at, at, to some degree within the position they're playing at. And so, um, you know, I, I don't think it's about about one guy or one position group. I think collectively we need to improve from where we were today. Do I think it was bad? No, I, I don't. I don't think it was bad. I thought there was plenty of good things out there, but I know we can be better. Was Trey Watson banged up today? A little bit. Yeah, he's a little bit. We we held a couple guys out. And we limited some guys today. You know, th this was a, a bit more about the younger guys and how they'd respond to that setting. You know, just gathering information. So, some guys that we had a good amount of information on were either held out or limited. So, um, they'll get back going again. Where does Trey fit into the rotation? Kind of well, th that one's not settled yet. You know, we know what True is on the one side, um, and there's a, there's a great competition going on between the other three guys. You know, do Trey, Trey, and uh, Marcus Peters. Um, and, and that's healthy because the reality that we're going to go through the entire season with just two guys isn't, you know, isn't going to happen. So we're going to need all of those guys. Um, but he fits in great. He's got such a knack for the football. He's such a spatially aware guy, very high football IQ. Um, and he can not only play corner, he can go in and play some nickel. He can, he can sneak back and do some safety work. So he's a very versatile guy as well. So all those things bode well for him. Was there anything with He just got a cramp. Yeah. Anything with Brandon Beaver? Believe me, I was a big sigh of relief. For me too. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with Brandon Beaver? He, he, I should have. I'm, I'm remiss for holding him out of that statement too. I thought Brandon had a, has had a nice camp. He and another young guy got in the setting and, and maybe guessed a little today and got beat on the deep ball by, by Marvin. So again, a, a lot of positions where guys got to get used to the setting of being out there on the field by themselves and still doing things right. Yeah. Would you have, in general the defense? I mean, if you today and then all of fall camp so far has kind of picked up where it left off in the spring and it's kind of making that progression that you I want to see. I think our defense is, is really, I feel good about it, you know, especially with a lot of the changes we're making from a personnel standpoint, you know, they, they continue to do some good stuff. Um, I think their incremental progress has been good. You know, again, I thought we had a couple things that set back today. I think offensively we've improved quite a bit since spring and so sometimes you don't see the defense's improvement when the offense makes some big plays down the field and does what they do but I think our offense is much improved from spring um, but I do think the defense continues to get better. What does it do for Kendall Taylor and Jadon Mickens to get a touchdown like they did today? What does that do for their confidence? Well it's been great. They, they both had great camps. I mean geez I feel like I talk about them every day. Um, Again, they're going to have a, you know probably a handful or so plays that they want back from today as well. You know, but that's all part of putting them in this situation and making them play. Uh, speaking of those two, what is it that you've seen out of them so far this camp that you've really liked? Oh, they're explosive guys. I think they're different than what we've had in our program uh, the first three years. They, their their acceleration out of their cuts, their route running, their very high football IQs. They, they give us a dimension an explosive dimension to our offense that we haven't had. They can create big plays. They're very sudden in and out of their breaks. Uh, and then when they get opportunities to make plays, they make them. You know, they, they're not shy about the football at all. They go make the plays. Are you going to compete something that is a want to see, or does it not matter? Um, I think it's good for us. You know, it's training camp. It's supposed to be hard. You know, it's supposed to be a little bit tough. It's supposed to wear on you a little bit. I think that that's where you develop some mental toughness as a football team. Um, oh, yeah. You know, not to the extent of, of injuring anybody by any means, but I think sometimes this heat is good. You know, we're going to go some places this year where it's going to be a lot warmer than it is in Seattle. And that, that's just that's the way it is. And so our experiences that we're getting now, maybe we can take with us when we go on those road trips and, uh, and keep in our back pocket and we'll be able to talk to when we get ready for those games. Do you look like the move to Travis Feeney has already kind of started to show a little bit? Uh, that Travis is around the ball again. Uh, this is two, two days in a row now where I don't know how much he was right. I'll have to look at the film to see exactly if he, where he was right and where he was wrong. But what I do know, he's around the ball. And he gets to the ball. And even when it looks like we're going to have some big plays, offensive, some real big plays, 41 shows up and knocks him out of bounds or gets the tackle. So, um, he, I know that about him, that he's around the ball, he's a good tackler, he can cover a lot of ground for a big guy. I just got to see how much he was right today and, and how much better he was from yesterday and then moving forward. I know Glenn's sitting out right now, but it seems like he's twice he's kind of won over coaching staffs right yeah. out of the gates. What is it about him that, that he's kind of been able to do that? You know, Justin is diligent in his preparation. You know, he really prepares himself mentally, physically. Um, he knows our playbook and our schemes inside and out. Um, He's in great shape, and so, you know, when he gets in, there's a comfort level as a coach when a guy knows what to do. You know, it's, it's hard to play a guy when 
he doesn't know what he's doing or he doesn't make the right calls or there's lack of communication. Justin's in, he's confident in what he's going to do. He makes his calls, he lines up right. And that's very comforting for, from a defensive and a head coach's standpoint that you have a guy out there that is in charge, everybody's on the same page, and he's in the right spot. So I know you probably tell us, is there any update on Dwayne Washington? Not yet, no. I'd fill you in as soon as I could.